share with our listeners a little bit on the importance of that, because I think sometimes we take for granted um, or we don't realize we're not getting the feedback that we need because we're not finding those truth tellers. So talk a little bit about that and, and what, you know, how you figured out or learned that you needed to kind of proactively seek that out. Yeah, so I'll, I'll say it took a little while for me to learn that. And I probably <laughs> stumbled along the way. Right. Um, and there was a key moment or transition in my career where I had been an HR business partner for the technology division. And I was mm-hmm. sort of running the business partner team. Mm-hmm. And I was up for that next role to run the head of technology HR. Uh-huh. And right. um, it was clear to me as my boss was moving up to take on more that that was the role I was being groomed for. Mm-hmm. Uh, yet <laughs> when the opportunity presented itself, um, I wasn't given it right out of the, right out of the gate. And I, it was a, a big shock to me um, that why wouldn't that be the case? Right. And, and what ended up, I learned that day when I went home devastated that uh-huh. why would I be getting this opportunity? Um, you know, that for some reason, somebody hadn't been giving me feedback. You also were a person who helped kind of open connections for me to build better relationships with the right people or people that I needed to. Um, what kind of, what drives you in, in doing that? Because that seems like it, it is something that, you know, naturally was a superpower for you. Wow. Thanks for saying that, Monica. And it's, it's great to see um, how my feedback's helped you. So <laughs> I, I feel very lucky um, to know that that's made such an impact on you. And it's, mm-hmm. it's why I do what I do. Um, so back to your question, I think, I think it's, it's really, um, you know, as I've gone through my career, I didn't have all the role models or mentors or sponsors early mm-hmm. on um, to help guide me. And as I struggled and tripped and fall, you know, mm-hmm. through all mm-hmm. those different moments, you know, I realized that um, that learning had to be passed on to others. And mm-hmm. it was sort of incumbent on me to help, especially women who don't get as much feedback as men, mm-hmm. um, those nuggets of things that will help unlock them. Right. Um, and so it was just more to me about feeling like my, my role is to help others. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's what I'm good at in, and connecting people, but also unlocking their potential so they can do the best work they can do. Mm-hmm. And it's just magical to watch when, when somebody like you was able to <laughs> sing and connect with a, a bunch of people Um, that you didn't connect with before and that opened up so many pathways for you. What helped you gain access to those influential leaders, mentors, sponsors? Um, Because I get that question a lot from, um, you know, our, our clients, our women, our listeners who say, you know, how do I, how do I find those influential leaders or how do I even, you know, build a relationship? Um, You know, what are the things that you did to kind of seek that out? Yeah, so I don't think I actually went on sort of like a journey to find these people. I mm-hmm. think they, they, you find them through the work you do. Mm-hmm. And every step of the way, whether it was working in the technology division or working in the operations division, or then running some of the federation teams, or even in the investment management division in Goldman, each mm-hmm step of the way, and then even going to Apple and all these other places, you make relationships with people because of uh, doing work together or delivering something for mm-hmm. someone or helping somebody through a difficult time. And, and those relationships, what I find with a lot of people is they just see them at that face value. Mm-hmm. And what you have to do is take it to the next step. And right. you know, when you help somebody ask for help you mm-hmm. know, or ask someone for advice or or see where you can actually start to form a relationship more than just the work product that you're dealing with at that moment. Mm. Um, and, that's, and that's what networking is about and building relationships. It's not just about the moment in time in which you're doing the work, it's about mm-hmm. how you carry that forward and keep that relationship going. Um, and what you find in many cases is that in the beginning, the relationship might be you doing some work for somebody else and then they're benefiting. And then, then later it kind of turns around where they need help Mm -hmm. and, and they'll ask you for it and you help them. And Mm -hmm. then you ask for help and they help you and just becomes sort of like a bi-directional relationship. Um, and that moves forward with you. One of the things, um, I, I hear all the time from our women is they struggle with asking for help because they feel like when they ask for help, 
they, it makes them seem like they may be inadequate or not, you know, up for the job or the task. How do you, how did you get past that fear or how do you, you know, how did you shift that mindset? Because, you know, like you said, you build some of these relationships by just asking for help. You know, I don't think there's like a magic bullet here. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could say, here's how you do it in a three-step process. Uh -huh. I do think you have to try things out. You have mm -hmm. to experiment. And um, for, for some of my relationships, what I found is that sometimes you don't even have to ask. Someone knows to ask you if you need help. Mm. Um, and sometimes it's you're going to them and asking a favor. Um, the thing that I've learned is you could always, when you ask, you just have to be okay that someone could say no. Mm. And, and most, more than not, they don't say no. Um, right. You know, so if you're going to say, I want you to be my mentor, well, that's a little hard because it's, it's so amorphous. And, right. and why do you want me to be the mentor? What can I, what time commitment are you looking for? All that. But if I say to you, Hey, Monica, I really think you're amazing at public speaking. And I want to mm -hmm. learn how you, how you became a great public speaker. Can you sit down with me for an hour and share with me your lessons learned there? Well, that's different. Now you have sort of a specific thing and people mm -hmm. will help you and go through it. Um, the, the other piece I would say to people is, you know, um, we fear asking for help a lot of times because we are afraid it'll show a weakness that we have. Mm -hmm. And, and actually asking for help allows your manager or your colleagues or others to know where they can actually use their superpowers to help you. And right, then, right. and then they'll leverage you for the things that they don't know. So when you ask for help, it does get infectious and other people ask for help back. And then everyone brings their expertise to bear to support where you mm -hmm. don't know something or where they don't know something. How do you handle change? And, you know, especially in this, you know, world of, of work changing every day now. <laughs> yeah, that's a, um, yeah, it's a really great question. Um, I think during this time you have to take risk mm -hmm. and, um, and be, be willing to fail a little bit. And, um, a failure is not a failure unless you make it a failure. You know, mm. it's, you know, it's an opportunity to learn and get back up and do something better and different. So I think take risks, um, reach out to people you wouldn't reach out to, ask for things in your job that you wouldn't have asked for, fill mm. a gap on something that, some, that needs to get done that nobody wants to do, but you know needs to get done. And if it got done, it would be great. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really ask for help, right? Like, I think all mm -hmm. those things are, are, um, are things you could do during this time to actually build your brand, to get known for something, to master your craft. Um, and ultimately it comes down to is drive the change you want, right? Mm -hmm. And um, a yeah. lot of times I get known for being sort of fearless and a, and a change agent, but it, it's really about seeing what the future should be and making sure that you can help make that happen mm -hmm. because no one's gonna make it happen unless you do. How do you become the change agent for others? Yeah. Um, how do you become the change agent for others? I don't know if I, um, I'm sort of premeditated about it. <laughs> as, as you made it seem. Uh -huh. But um, I, I think it goes back to that um, one of my superpowers is building relationships, connecting people to other people, and, and trying to help make a difference in people's lives so that they can actually do their best work wherever mm -hmm. they choose to do it. And when I see somebody struggling and I like to just jump in and help them. So mm -hmm. I would just, to the audience listening, I would say when you see your colleague or your boss or somebody who, a friend who's struggling, you know, give them the support because that it's always more powerful in twos than it is by yourself. Right. And, and, and giving that support is, is so important. And pretty much as I look back on my career, I've spent time helping others, um, you know, get through the things that I didn't have the help mm. to get through uh, from right. others, right? So people didn't help me. So I used that experience to say, let me help somebody else and pay it forward. But let me just close with a couple of things as I look back. Mm -hmm. um, as you think about your career, think about it's never going to be a straight path, that mm -hmm. taking a, a different path than you expected is never bad. And you're always faced with maybe two choices or maybe three, and you're worried that what the opportunity costs of the others, don't think about that. Just take the path that you choose and do it really well. Mm -hmm. Master that craft. Mm -hmm. um, build the gaps that nobody else is willing to fill. 
um, be open to that feedback and ask for it and give it to others and then take those risks and drive the change that you seek. Um, and if you do those things, you'll look back on your career and you'll say, wow, I've made a difference in the lives of the people that I worked with and also for myself. And that'll help others do the same. So that's what I, I, I hope people take away from this is that it's so important to continue to build those relationships, keep those relationships live, no matter where you go or what you do, and then help connect people so that they get that next best opportunity.